All right, guys, it's Saturday. We've got a fun little job lined up this morning. Well, at least I think we do. I really don't know for sure what we're doing, but one thing I do know, it's close to home. It's close enough to home this morning. We're going to leave the old pickup truck behind and uh, let's just take the old Ranger to work this morning. What do you say? All right, guys, we are up here at the Logger Wade family compound. For you guys that don't know Logger Wade, he is a very good friend of mine and my neighbor and has an awesome YouTube channel called Logger Wade. He's the whole reason I'm doing YouTube. So for some reason, if you're subscribed to me and not him, uh, sneak over and check him out. He's got the... He, he, <laughs> he's a lot of fun. Let's just leave it at that. He is a lot of fun. So we got uh, kind of a two-part deal this morning. The first thing, we should have some trucks rolling in here any minute. And we're going to load some of this material out. This is what we call chert. Uh, you guys that have followed my channel for a while, you've seen us load this stuff out before. I think the technical term for it is, is outwash. So at one time, there was a river up here. I don't know if you guys can see. We're way up on the hill. The river's way down there. But this is basically a big gravel bar, a big sandbar put here by millions and millions of years ago. There was some sort of river or water feature here which is long gone. Uh, now, whether the river was this high or the hill was that low and then something raised the hill up, well, we could debate that forever. But you can kind of see how it was layered in there for years. This is all uh, just sand down here. That's, it looks like it's rock, but it's not. I'd say to there a million years, that may be sandstone rock. But basically what it is, is it's gravel, sand, and then you got some clay into it. And uh, it makes awesome material for uh, road beds. So we got a guy that bought 20-something uh, truckloads of this this morning. He's going to use it for a foundation for his garage. Our job is to load it. It's supposed to have eight or nine trucks. They're going to run two rounds. So uh, first things first, we're going to load out some trucks. We get done loading out trucks. If you guys remember the video from last year, I guess it was this year, around New Year's. Ironically enough, this is the last video the 120 was used in before it went into the shop. So we built this little pond down here and took out the old pond over there. Well, that old pond has dried up quite a bit. And uh, Phil just looks, uh, wants a little bit of help getting some mud and some loose ends thrown up. So once we get these trucks loaded, we'll probably sneak down over the hill and uh, finish up on that. So for now, waiting on trucks. All right, trucks are supposed to be here at 7. It is almost 7.30. They are finally, finally rolling in over the hill up there. Phil's down there on the dozer. He's doing a little bit of work ahead of us trying to uh, get our road in up there. Oh, Jerry Clee, he's pretty good on a dozer, let me tell you. Oh, Phil, he's no slouch either. He's, uh, he's pretty good. Let's see if we get these truck drivers directed in here. I see that didn't work out. 
mine and there's one in there. We are slowly getting the hands slowly back together. I do finally got all the hard cards. And honestly, this machine's just a little bit better balanced. We're reaching out over the side, so it works pretty good for loading these trucks like this. It does work a little bit better than the 120, but that's beside the point. My whole point of having two machines. My whole point of having two machines is just the uh, the logistics of it. I can't run the two machines at once, but it saved me so much uh, saved me so much time and effort on trucking and moving stuff around and all that good stuff. But, okay. down there with Dozer, he's kind of cleaning up the mess. That's where Captain Clean would hold out a bunch of churn out up there, and it's just hard to keep it smooth bottom with the excavator. And the next time we load, we're gonna the load the trucks will load right here. So Bill's got Dozer here. He's just kind of going through it, tidying up a little bit for us. They've had that thing for a long time. That has been one awesome, awesome machine. I don't know if you guys can see up there. Got nine trucks up there waiting. We'll time lapse load a few of these. Six trucks loaded and on the road. That went pretty good. I'm gonna ramp for a second. I don't understand it, I don't get it. And I'm not gonna pick on anybody in particular, but I sit here and load out six trucks. Bam, 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 bam. It takes me about three and a half, four minutes real time to load a truck. Get these trucks on the road, get them spread out. I load the last, the last truck. I swing around and look. I swing around and look. And I'm thinking, all right, these trucks are rolling. We're gonna come in at a nice pace on the other end for the other guys. We'll be back here at a nice pace where nobody's waiting on nobody. No, I turn around, and look, and four of them are sitting right down the damn road waiting on the last one to get loaded. And I guarantee if I would have said something to one of them, they said, well, we don't know where the job site's at. We gotta follow each other. They're going 15 minutes down the road. If you can't follow simple directions to that job site, well, I'm not gonna say if you know what I'm gonna imply. I, 
They're wasting the truck driver's company's time, they're wasting my time, because now they're all gonna roll back in here at the same time, we're gonna be sitting here waiting on each other again. All right, ran over, I'm done. I don't get it. If you're loaded, hit the darn road, get out of there and get back. We ain't got time for that. I said I was done. <clears throat> I'm really done now. But now, I'm gonna sit here and twiddle my thumbs and wait for trucks to get back, because one's gotta follow the darn leader and can't take directions from the rest of them. I promise, I'm really over with this stuff. Ran over. All right, wait on tracks. All right, guys, the second round. This is actually truck number four of the second round. I don't know if you guys can see that truck. It's absolutely beautiful truck. I guess these guys got held up a little bit on the other end because it's been working out pretty good for the last uh, three or four trucks. I don't know if you guys can see, but about the same time I put the uh, last bucket on this truck, uh, other truck's been rolling in. Where are you right there? Got that truck, and we should have that black Peter Bill. Should have one more to go. All right, just got truck number five loaded. Truck number six is rolling in. That's a pretty good looking old Peter Bill right there. Not a huge Peter Bill fan, but I don't know. I like the black and the rugged look. If he'll pull up far enough for me. Keep on going, buddy. A little more. A little more. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Pull forward. There you go. There you go. That'll work. All right. Let's load. Last load. Last truck. There goes the uh, last truck loaded down and heading out. We're gonna hop on the Ranger, head down over the hill, and uh, see what Phil's got going on for project number two of the morning. All right guys, Phil went to grab something to eat for lunch real quick. Let me give you a quick little tour of what we got going on. This used to be a palm, and the whole dam slid out down over the hill. There's actually a couple of videos uh, on my channel. I cannot remember the name of them. If I can figure it out, I'll put a link in the description to them. But uh, we actually had the 120 up here, and Tiny, their big truck, and we hauled a bunch of this stuff out of here. And Phil's been kind of working on over the last year, getting it dried up. But uh, there's still a bunch of the mud and sludge from the old pond up there on that hill. And there's some water seeps coming out of that hill. Phil don't want to dig that mud out until we got something to put back. He's afraid that bank may slide and give away. If you guys follow along our way, you kind of see where it slid in front of his house. Uh, he's messed with that a few times. So I'm basically going down through here now. And uh, before we dig the mud out, we want to make sure we have good material to go back in. So I'm just uh, scooping, digging, and swinging and piling up, sorting us out some good stuff. So whenever we uh, are confident we got enough good stuff, we will go back and... Uh, start taking the mud out so nothing really exciting is going to happen here for a while so i'll check back in with you guys in a bit because as far as right now it's a uh, big scoop swing dump big scoop swing dump i think that's the order got that dug back through there pretty good ways we got a pretty good little pile of dirt there started i started getting in some material that uh wasn't as good as we'd like for it to be so the good dirt we probably need from here on out is underneath that pile, so I'm going to hop in the loader. Phil's actually using the loader as a compactor. He's going to hop in the dozer, and I'll show you what we got going on over here. All right, guys, I'm going to go off subject on you here for just a little bit and uh, talk about something that's kind of in um, in play right here. That's actually something I was thinking about while I was running the loader, and that is the experience. Experience when it comes to excavating or experience when it comes to any profession in life in particular. Now, Phil has obviously got, got a tremendous amount more experience uh, excavating than I do. He's probably been... Uh, in it or around it for 60 plus years myself i've been in it or around it for about 20 plus years but the plan on this was just constantly involving and phil and i didn't have radios and we didn't communicate a whole lot it was just one of those uh, without a whole lot of communication we both just knew what needed to be done and we knew the most efficient way uh, to make every machine every movement we make with every machine as efficient as possible and the reason why i bring this up is it's a couple different reasons one 
Experience is something that can't be taught. It's something that's kind of got to be earned. You can go and get a formal education and get all the uh, all the basics and all the theories of operation and all that good stuff. But until you actually get on the job site and get that applied, it's just really hard to explain. It's just it's it's something you have to earn. I guess is the best way the best way I know how to put it. Of course, that always begs the question: is is well, how do you get the experience? And and that's that is a very good and a very legit question. And sometimes it's not as easy as it sounds. But the the main answer I always have to that is: you got to put yourself in position to get the experience. And I still do that today. Uh, even though Jerry Clee works for me, he has way more experience on a dozer than I am. And I jump at the chance I get to have him out on the job site where I can sit there and learn from him and gain experience from him. Anytime I'm working around another operator like Phil, I am, I'm probably studying what they're doing more than what I'm doing myself. Just because I want to see how they're thinking and how they're going about doing their job as efficiently as they possibly can. So, uh, and I'll I'll even go this little farther with uh, Captain Kleeman or Matt or man behind the scenes that works for me. Uh, I try to get those guys in in position, those guys on the job side. So if if I see an area that's not uh, super critical or a place where I can throw them in machine and get them a little bit of experience, and then I'll I'll let them do their thing. I'll stand back and let them do their thing, and I'll kind of watch what they're doing. And then after they do it for a while and kind of get a little bit of a feel for it, I'll kind of give them some pointers or give them some input on that. And that input to them makes a whole lot more sense after they've sat in the seat and got that experience, if that makes sense. The flip side of that is I've been employing people in the excavating business for, oh, close to 20 years now, I guess. And I would, I will much rather, if I have two applicants on my desk and one has 10 years of experience and one has two years of formal schooling or trade training, I will take the guy with experience every day. There's so much more to excavating than just being good on a machine or being smooth on a machine. You guys have heard me talk about it time and time again about setting these jobs up and having the big picture in mind and how important that is. And guys, a lot of that comes with experience. So just kind of curious what your guys' thoughts are. If you have any uh, recommendations on how some guys can get the experience because we, we all need new operators coming up. We always have to have the next generation in training. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And uh, comment down below and let me know what you guys think about it. Alright guys, the mud started getting a little bit too deep for the dozer over here, so I'm taking the excavator, kind of shuffling it out here to where Phil can get to it, and we got a engine's pushing it straight across to the dump site. I'm pretty confident we're going to have enough good dirt and it's going to pack good enough. We're committing to getting all this mud out of here. It's kind of weird, I guess it's because it's paused the dry for so long with the top. Six, eight inches are really dry. You got about two foot of absolute crap. And you got some pretty good material over it, so just kind of mixing it together and shuffling her out slowly but surely. I got a feel where he can push in a straight line. Kind of give him a little bit of a trench, what we call a trench setup. Get his trench set up where he can push in a straight line across there and he can get quite a bit of material each time. Watch him go down through that. Bam! Just like that. Off, off, and away he goes. I can keep his trench filled. Keep his trench full and he can keep his trench cleaned out. I'll have this out of here in no time. chose to put the trench right there in that spot and uh, the bank seems to be the most solid so that the real problem we were having with the loader now you guys can see it on the video but the uh we had a spot up there and started pumping real bad that loader just don't do real good in that pumpy ground that dozer especially that dozer it's an LTP dozer it does really good we're trying to fix problems not create more Anytime you can get a trench push set up like that, it always works better than trying to chase it across here in the dozer because you can push so much more in one pass. It's basically like sideboards for your blade. The reason we're taking 
bringing all this mud out of here instead of just burying it. He just buried all this mud in here. Almost 100% guaranteed this hill's gonna slide. Because all this mud is is just a big lubricant. You put a weight and other dirt on top of it, it won't hold it. It'll slide right off the top of it. And the second reason is it's actually some halfway decent dirt. So this stuff dries out. Unlike a lot of this dirt around here, it'll actually grow grass. So once we get it, we'll push it over there out of the way. Push it over out of the way, and after all this done, after all the excavating's done to get it shaped the way he wants it, he'll come back in here and put it on top of the topsoil. So it'll still get it'll still get used. It just needs to be on the top and not the bottom. You don't want to fix one problem to create another one. So that's why we're going through the trouble of digging it all out and cleaning it up and just not burying it. If it was just a big flat hole and this thing wasn't on a hillside, you could probably bury it and get away with it. But this thing being on a hillside, gravity will eventually win. I promise you. That was the hope right there. Can you guys see Phil out there? We got that mud off there. He's going to come in with the dozer. Shave that last little bit off, clean her up. My guy will be ready to start putting their stuff back. So it's nice when the plan comes together and works the way it should. that it's gonna clean up uh, clean up pretty nice so once he gets all that dirt out of there a lot of mud I should say we'll take this good dirt I dug out earlier in the day and we'll start layering it back in he'll probably push it in there with the dozer then I'll wheel track it in with the loader that was kind of our test run over there to see how it's gonna work because uh, Phil didn't want to leave that bank unchalked he wanted to make sure we got something back up against it to hold it if we dug it out so we're pretty confident our plan is gonna work so we're going for it folks we're going for it Guys, let me swing around here and show you. Well, that is, look at that, that is a pitiful bucket of dirt. Check that out. Phil's got all the dirt, all the dirt, all the mud cleaned out of there. So it's time to fill her in with some good stuff and get her packed in. We're kind of doing this in phases. So this is probably two thirds of the pond. There's still some over there, and we're not for sure which direction we're going to go. We want to get this done. There's some weather tomorrow. We don't know how long we're going to be able to work on this. So we want to get this done. Bill's got some good dry dirt. Dirt I got's not quite as good, so we're gonna kind of throw it up there and mix the two together. Somebody asked me in a video one time, I think it was nowhere core in the day and the difference between materials and what we look for. Um, we want like red, tan, and brown clay. The gray clay don't quite work as well. It has a lot to do with the texture of it. You definitely don't want topsoil. I hate it. It's just one of those things that kind of goes back to experience. You do it enough, you kind of know what to look for. It's like that dam we repaired. You dig it up and the old stuff out that's not any good, you know not what not to put back in there. So, And you can put, you can have some of that not so good of stuff in there. Like right there is a chunk of gray clay. See it? You can have it in there. It just needs to be mixed with enough good stuff to hold it. Filler. We're gonna get a lift in there. Me and him both gonna throw some dirt. There's some more drain play. We'll get it busted up. Get a lift in there, and I'll hop on that loader, and uh, we'll get her get her compacted in real good. Go again. Digging back through here, and you guys remember from that first video, you guys been following me for a while. It's so pond dam, so pond dam camp slide. And, uh, pretty sure we figured out the reason why. There's about a six foot layer of topsoil down in here. That's why we're not throwing this over in the, or digging this out to full depth through here. Look at that. That dirt changes colors right there. That's basically the same stuff we just dug 
dug out, so I call that old gray clay. Last thing we want to do is put that back in there. We got some of it mixed in up here, but a little bit mixed in won't kill it. But we definitely don't want to fill it all back in with the same stuff. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to scrape what good stuff I can off the top. And we'll go back down to the other end when the dirt was good. Start borrowing, start borrowing dirt down there again. Yeah, that ain't no good. That's no good. No good, that's no joke. Let's see what we got over here. Hey, dirt. That looks better. That's usable. Let's see how long it lasts. Good dirt I can out of this out of this corner. Phil's getting that lift in. I'll probably hop on the loader here real quick and roll that in for him. Should be good to go. Well, come on, turn machine. Pretty much got whatever good dirt to be had out of that little section of the borrow pit. So Phil's getting that lift. Lift buzzed off real quick. Sneak in behind him here. Go sneak in the loader over here, slash compactor. We'll get this rolled in. Hold 544G John Deere loader. I don't know how many hours this thing's got on it. Pretty good old loader yet. 10,000. I got a feeling that's not right. I think it's got more than that on it. She's a little different than the old, uh, a little different than the old cat loader. All right, let's do this. Guys, I got a fill, a pretty good, uh, I got a fill, a good pile of fill. Is that proper terminology? I believe so. He's going town up there. While he's doing that, I'm trying to get this corner dipped out here a little bit. I'll tell you guys how much I absolutely love this blade. I'm all shoved down here in the mud. This thing is just slick as can be, but this is going to be a little bit contrary because we got to kind of, I don't want, I don't want this mud to run down and plug up this ditch over here, so I'm trying to get it trying to get it controlled. We're basically gonna put it back and we took out all that other stuff and just used it as a drying area, just let it dry out. Slimy, slimy, slimy. We're making pretty good progress on this thing though. Doing what we can when we can, look at that. It's just sticking up and it sticks together. It's not running, well that's nice. That's nice. I'll get a little pile up there on top and then I'll uh, we'll slide up there on top and do something with that before it runs down that ditch. Let's see if we can get out of here. Up the hill we go. Come on, ball mobile. I think we're gonna make it. I think we're gonna make it, folks. It's a win. Enough, some of them might end up getting buried right here. Oh, hang on. 
That's a heavy one. As you can see over there where Phil's getting that all layered back in, he just got there a lift put in. Get ready to hop on the loader and roll it in. But that's where all the mud was at a couple hours ago, and uh, this stuff's packing awesome. Yeah, it'd be nice to have the vibratory roller here or the cheap spin roller, but the loader works, guys. It, for what we're doing, it works just fine. So I'm gonna keep on playing in the mud, let him roll that in. I hope this wasn't a mistake. I committed to a hole I'm not sure I can get out of. Bill wasn't comfortable taking the dozer up on the top side, pushing it down, so he didn't know 
there was a soft spot or something getting him in trouble and I think he uh, he's possibly smarter than me because it is definitely deep and gooey right there. I'm trying to rake as much of it forward as I can and we'll start moving on our way back up out of here. Hopefully. Hopefully. Come on, baby. Oh, we might have a chance. Oh, we're spinning. Come on. Oh, yeah. Come on. There we go. You guys see Phil over He's rolling in that lift for the roller. It's looking good, guys. It is looking good. last bit of mud out of here. I haven't, I haven't covered any crazy treasures yet, so that's a good thing. Found a fence post long ago. Mud, mud, mud. Gotta love the mud. Still bailing mud, but if you look over there, Phil's got that lift all compacted in, looking sharp. He just hopped back on the dozer. He's gonna shove another lift in there. I'm still uh, trying to keep my mud out of the ditch. I'm gonna tell you how much I love mud. Gotta love mud. I'm gonna climb up out of this hole. We're getting there. Just uh, a lot of, a uh, lot of, uh, was it very few stamps and repeat them a lot? I think that's the way it's supposed to go. Phil's got his next lift in. He's getting ready to start compacting over there. I've got pretty much as much as I can do right here. The sun's going down over the hill. It's getting late. I don't know if we'll be back up here tomorrow or not. Tomorrow's Sunday. There's a chance of rain. If it don't rain, we'll probably be working. If it does rain, this might be the end of the video until next time we can get back. But Either way, before the end of this video, I will do a drone flight uh, over by Wade's house and we'll show you guys uh, why Phil's so worried about the compaction on that and uh, concerned about this hill slide. So I'm going to get this last little wad of mud up out of here and we're going to call it a day for now. All right, guys, it's a new day on the compound and the weather forecast has changed. It's supposed to be absolutely beautiful today. It's Sunday and Phil's got a little bit of a head start on me. Basically what he did, we got uh, one more lift in there. We got all of our dirt that we had uh, stockpiled there cleaned out. What the plan is this morning, I think he's gonna try to get in behind this mud with the dozer, push it down there to me. And we're gonna try to get it up there on that hill where that pile was at because we need that dirt on that side. We're out of dirt on this side of the ditch. We need that dirt. We need the mud out of the way first. You guys see the sequence of events. Hopefully there's just not a dozer stuck in there somewhere. And we'll all be good. Let's do it. Guys, watch real close. It's hard to tell how steep that bank is over there. Phil's working on it. He's got to be real careful. He, don't, he can't back back up. It kind of like Jerry in that air pond. We've walked real close. You can see that mud. It's just slowly easing its way to us. As soon as it gets here, we're not going to reach it. We'll start sucking her up over the bank.
as you see it from the drone shots, Phil's kind of got it all coming to me, all the ooey gooey nasty stuff. I end up hopping down here, in here a little bit, just trying to help him. Trying to get him enough room up there where he can work. I think he's finally got in there on some solid, uh, where he's gonna do some good. I'll break a little bit of this down, then I'll jump back up here on top of the bank. And we'll kind of throw that back a little bit farther. We can get this mud out of here. We're gonna be in good shape from here on out. We're gonna get her. We've not got her now to be honest with you. It's got a good solid bottom to it. There's just a couple sucker holes here and there. But for the most part, I think it's gonna fill in pretty nice. You just gotta get all this yummy, nasty, lovely smelling mud. I don't know what else to call it, it's just dirt. Phil's got him a good dirt dam back here behind it, keeping all that mud in front of him. He's getting her pushed and shut down. It's working. Nobody's got stuck yet. It's working. Everything's working. take some of that old dam he's getting him a good lift of dirt in behind him there that way he makes sure he's always on good footing and kind of kills uh two birds with one stone he said it's pretty solid up there just got a couple random weepers coming out of the bank he's going to address but if he pushes on that it's like a lava flow it just all comes at me but we're uh it's hard to tell how much you got but i think we got a pretty good chunk of the mud out of here Every time I dig out with my nugget, my hole fills back in, so I feel like I'm getting nowhere, but I think I'm actually getting somewhere. Watch every pushes all night. You guys see that moving? See how it's just blowing down to me? It don't take a whole lot. I'll dig a little bit out, then he'll do it again. There it blows, it's in. That helps him out tremendously on his end. That just gives him that much more room to work up there. All right, let's take two seconds. Two seconds. I ran about truck drivers the first half of this. So I ran about something else right now. <laughs> so you guys always comment about the scratches on my counterweight and call me a rookie and all this other stuff and rookie scratch counterweights. I don't get it, guys. I do not get it. I scratch my counterweight. I'm proud of it. I don't care. You want to call me a rookie, you can call me a rookie. But... You want to know, I tried to explain this the other day. See how that counterweight swings right through that blade? That's what takes most of the paint off my counterweight and while the paint's off the counters. I am not getting off this machine to shove off that blade every time I swing around. It is what it is. I don't care. I, I don't, I just don't get the, I just don't get that if you scratch your counterweight, you're a rookie operator. I don't, I don't get, I don't understand that. It's back there, it's got paint on it. Piece of equipment. Nobody complains when you scratch the bucket or the thumb. Now, you came the side panels in on the machine, that's a whole different story. But as far as an occasional scratch or a little paint wore off the corner of the counterweight, nah, that just means you've been working that day. That's, a, that's my take on it. That's my two cents. Let me know what you guys think. I'm curious. I 
try to take pride in my machines and keep them in presentable shape. I don't need new paint. I don't, I don't need scratch free. I want everything that's supposed to be on the machine to be on the machine, all the doors and panels to shut, all the glass to be in it. That's a good looking machine to me. A few scratches, that just means it's been used. Um, one other thing, you know, on the 120 rebuild, everybody's like, you should have painted it, you should have painted it, it represents your company. First off, I'm the first one, if a guy's got all new equipment, the first thing that comes to my mind is I can't afford them. The second thing is, I don't let my equipment do the talking for me, I let my work do the talking for me. What's the work look like? That's the important part. So, anyways, rant's over, let me know what you guys think. I'm kind of curious about the counterweight thing, is I, I have never got that. I just, I just don't get it. I don't... I, I just, I don't know. I just don't get it. Maybe I'm weird. Maybe I'm in the minority. I don't know. But uh, Phil's making good progress on the upper side. I got some room here, so I'm going to go back to dipping mud. I'm doing this the dangerous way. I got the blade behind me so I can use it to push off. And it is slick. You grab a hold of something solid and not mud, down the hole you go. That's a rookie move. guys we're closing in on her phil come over and help me make it. i gotta push it a little farther so i was getting behind with the excavator but uh gonna have plenty of room for the mud he's up there getting ready to push the uh, rest of it down too it's hard to show how steep that bank is over there it's, it's crazy we got just a i don't know probably about 30 truck loads right there yeah we gotta get out maybe not quite that many 20 20 20 and 30 we'll go with that <clears throat> you guys see that turtle right there big old snapping turtle i threw him up out of there about an hour ago trying to be a nice guy and save his life he's been staring at me ever since i'm not sure if he's thanking me for saving his life or if he's mad that's what we're talking about but he has not moved in the last hour he's just watching every move we make but we're closing in on her check her out almost got her check it out down there guys we are close that's the last little berm of mud right there. Phil's gonna shove up where I can grab it. It should be in good shape. If anybody's wondering, my turtle has uh, he's changed, position, changed positions over there. So he's still over there watching me. And I saved another one. I don't know where his friend went. Oh, he went back down the ditch. I've thrown him up twice. He keeps going back down the ditch. Boy, you'll learn one of these days. I don't know if Mary's got to figure it out. That one, not so much. I'd say another 15 minutes here or so, and we're going to have the mud out of this pond, and then it'll be time to fill a hole in. Joanne stopped by on the loader. You guys see over there, everybody swing by. She uh, rolled that last lift in. Hey, me and Phil both look bad. She's way better than the loader. Neither one of us ever thought about, man. But we're getting there, guys. We are getting there. It's, it's Sunday, but man, it is an absolutely gorgeous day. It is a gorgeous day. Love it. Did you bring me lunch? You're not going to bring it all the way to me? Well, what fun is that? <laughs> There's a whole bunch of randomness in there. Is it edible? I don't know. You're pretty picky. All right. Thanks for lunch. You're welcome. All right, guys. Lunch was delicious. I think in the... Uh, 
15 years we've been married, it's maybe like the second time she's brought me lunch, so you gotta take advantage of working close to home when you can. But even better news than that, I believe this right here is going to be our last skip of mud. I lied, we're gonna come back for one more right there in front of me. And then from there, I'll take the pills and push it out there with a the dozer. That's going to be coming pretty close to uh, being our portion of this job. I'm going to go down here and clean out this ditch. We got a little bit of mud slid in the ditch. And then from there, it's going to be uh, we fill the dozer and start shoving the hose shut. So, well, I said a little bit of mud. From the looks of that, that's uh, that's a lot of bit of mud. Oh well, we'll get her. All right, guys, this is the last thing we need to do before we're done with the excavator. This is the trench that Stevie dug in here a while back to drain everything up there. We're trying our best to keep all the mud up out of here. I had some drier stuff, see the different color stuff, but it wasn't quite enough, and Phil couldn't quite see how far he was pushing that stuff over the hill because it just kind of oozes. Nevertheless, some of it ended up down here in the ditch. We want to make sure this ditch stays open, so I'm not sure how I'm going to do this yet, but we're going to attempt to clean this ditch out. time I've dug this poor little guy out of the mud. I know he's trying to hide from me, but buddy, I am doing my best to try to save your life. He's going to do this again. We're going to set you up here on the bank, and you're going to wash nice and patiently while I get this ditch cleaned out, and you can come back. I promise. There, he's safe and sound up there. I know you can't see him, but he's safe and sound. Poor little guy. I feel bad for him. I'm getting the ditch cleaned out, but I am again to think this is a bad idea. I am mudded in would be an understatement. Come on, baby. Come on. We might make it out of here. Scratch some more paint off our counterweight real quick. Look at that. I was gonna be mad about that. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It's uh, yeah, I'm just trying to have a little bit of fun. All right, buddy. I'm sorry. You can go hide in the mud now. I'm done. I promise. You've had a rough day, haven't you? Poor guy. I feel bad for him. I've just been trying to help him out, but this job has been a real inconvenience on his lifestyle. I can tell by the way he looks at me. But uh, check it out. We got the. Uh, Got the ditch all cleaned out, including the Volvo out of the ditch. That got a little interesting there for a while, but don't you slide in there. I see you doing it. Nevertheless, that should drain. Phil's, uh, Phil's tied into getting the, uh, getting all the dirt back in the pond up there so we can get her packed in. He's pretty much done with me. I'm gonna let him, uh, let him work for a few hours. I'll come up here and check on him at the end of the day. We'll wrap up that video then and see what all he's got done, but uh, pretty successful. Pretty successful weekend on the farm.
First off, guys, what an absolutely amazing piece of property Phil and Joanne have overlooking the Ohio River here in southern Indiana. It's just, we love it up here on this hillside. But this is the pond, guys. As you guys can see, everything is getting filled in. Phil has got a lift pretty much on both sides, pretty much up to ground level, uh, where he's not so worried about that bank sliding in. But as we swing around the Volvo here, we're going to take a beeline across the hill. And I'll show you why Phil is so concerned about getting that packed back in and getting that hillside chalked. Now all this ground we're flying over here is actually a pretty good little hillside and that's where they run their cattle at. This is pretty much used for a pasture area for the head of cattle they got. A small pond there is the one we actually dredged out with a super stick. Got a pretty good little video on that as well. But as we slow down here, this is uh, down below Wade's house. It's really hard to show great on this house, on, on this, but you can see these two areas where they've kind of slid out. And uh, a lot of people comment on Wade's videos about these different different areas here. And basically what that is is that chert or that outwash runs all the way along that ridge. And that's the bottom of it where the water comes out of it. And it makes a wet spot there and, and that clay is like a lubricant and it slides off. Very little risk to the house up there. But uh, it sure makes a mess out of the pasture. So that's what Phil is trying to prevent on the other side by getting all that dirt packed in there good and kind of creating a chalk. So guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and as always, guys, we shall catch you on the next one.